Hey guys, this is Ryan, the Geeky Veep. Welcome back to our video series on Power Query. Today, I've got a lot to show you. Um, some very interesting functions within Power Query that I think you really like. So let's just real quickly go over what we'll cover. Um, we're going to remove the top so many rows. We're going to hit that function. I'm going to show you the index column and then the modulo column. Now this is a very interesting function. We're going to use it to tackle um, a, a case that most of us have almost every day in our reports, a report that might have multiple rows of data related to a specific um, transaction, uh, customer, whatever. We're going to take a look at that. Uh, we're going to do some if functions. We're going to go back and look at how you have the applied steps and how you can correct a previous step. I'm going to show you the fill down feature. Um, filter you've already seen. Um, I'm going to show you how to do, there are some um, date functions in here and I'll do an end of month column which is really fantastic. Uh, and then how to even name your steps so you can understand when you look at your applied steps what you're trying to do and deleting some steps. So we're going to go over all that. I know it sounds like a lot but hang with me and um, I think you'll learn a lot from this. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay so here we have our report. It's a typical report. We've got a, it's a loan report. It's a detailed loan report for a certain credit union uh, for a certain end of month. This is for the end of March. And as you can see, we have customer city and state. Okay. And then for that same customer, we have their loan number, loan rate, and loan balance. And then we have the date the loan was open, maturity date, and branch. And then it moves on to the next customer. And the problem with this is it's really hard to manipulate this data um, for any kind of analysis later on. It's a nice, it's an end report, um, and it, it just doesn't work very well for us. So what we're going to try to do is fix this using Power Query. So let's go ahead and go straight to Power Query. We're going to um, select from table. Actually, we're going to highlight, because I want to make sure I capture this top information as well. I only have 47 rows here in this sample report, but you can imagine you can have thousands of rows and the setup would be exactly the same. Now when I click from table, uh, it mistakenly thinks I'm trying to choose from there. So let's go ahead and reselect it. Okay. Click OK. So where's the data for your table? Yep, seems to capture everything and it has headers. And we can deselect that if we want. Let's go ahead and deselect it. OK, great. So now we are into Power Query. I'm going to expand this and move to the left so you can see some of these um, functions a little bit better. Now, we can see that the customer number starts in row 6, so we're going to get rid of these first top five rows here. So we're going to say remove rows, hit the drop down, remove the top rows, and here we're going to specify five. Click OK. All right, and now you can see that the customer now is at the very top. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to use a combination of index and the modulo function. So we're going to add a column and we want to add an index column. Now you have a choice of starting from zero or from one. Um, I honestly don't care which one. So at zero we have the very first row uh, and then at six it starts over again. So it doesn't do much for me but now Let's add the modulo. And basically what it's asking us is how many rows until the information repeats itself. Okay, so we're going to put in, I think six will work. We'll see if that, and yes it does. So if we come over here, we see the first row where customer number the modulo number is zero, and when we come back down to the next customer number, it's zero. So 
what we've done is we've been able to recognize where the row is. Same thing for loans. The medulla number is 2 all the way down. Now that's very important. It's going to help us build an if function. And I'll show you why we want to do this. So we're going to add a custom column here. And the first thing we're going to do is we want to grab the customer number. Okay. The if function, we're asking it if the column, modulo column is 1, then we know that this is the customer number. Which means we want column 1. Oh, I skipped a step. I need to put then. So if the modulo column is column 1, then bring me column the information from column 1. Else, and we're going to have it come in with a null. And there you have it. That's our first column. I'm going to go ahead and speed through this real quick, and I'm going to get the rest of the um, information for city and state. So let me go ahead and speed up the time here. Okay, let's pause for just a moment here. And what I've been able to do is capture the customer number, the city, and the state, all because it recognized that the modulo number is number one here. The modulo row is number one. All right, so the next thing we want to do is something very similar for the, the next batch of information, the loan number, the loan rate, and the loan balance, right? But this time, almost the same thing. Oops. We want, uh, we'll type in loan number. If, insert, inserted modulo, equals. This time, we want the information from three. And there we go. Hopefully that makes sense. Now I'm gonna again I'm gonna speed through this. I'm actually gonna get through the rest of the formulas here, uh, and then we'll slow it down to discuss the next step. Okay, I'm going to pause here real quick. You notice when I tried to do the branch, I made a mistake. All we simply have to do is go over here to the applied steps, and we're looking at the apply the added custom column. And I said when the modulo equals three, then give me column three. I want when it equals five. We'll click OK, and that corrects it. Perfect. So here's one thing I want to show you. Um, you see I've got all these added custom columns. And if I have, I could probably have up to 100 applied steps at some point if I really wanted to. It's kind of hard to know what I'm doing here on all these. So I'm going to rename this. Could name it something like city custom column. Here, um, oops, rename this. This was the open date. Now you don't have to do this all the time, especially if you don't have a lot of applied steps. But there might be a time, like I said, where it just makes sense. It helps the user understand what you're doing by renaming some of these steps. OK, so now we have all of our information. It looks good. I've got in this row the member num customer number, city, and state. Then I've got information in this row, um, and then in this row over here. Actually, let me 
come down to the final step here. Okay, there we go. And then we have information in this row. So it's all, it's not lined up. And I'm gonna show you what we can do to fix that. What we're gonna do is you'll notice the last row of information for any customer is in modulo number five, right? So we're gonna to try to get everything into this row for each individual member, okay? So to do that, we're going to highlight all of these new if functions, these custom columns, oops, and customer, and we're gonna right click, and we're gonna choose fill, the fill function, and we're gonna go fill down, great. Now, let's remember, we want the information in row, modulo row five, right? So what do we do? We just go to the modulo column and we filter to show just column five. That looks really good. And now we can go back to home, choose columns, deselect this and now we can just select the information that we care about we can go through and make sure that the value type is what we want that's text text let me just check to make sure it's not text now it's text we want these Actually, we'll go ahead and have the loan number be text as well. The loan rate, make sure that is a decimal number. Loan balance, decimal number. And then maturity date and open date, change to a date. And then branch. We're fine with that being a text. And it looks like we've got everything we want. Great. All right, now imagine I have that same report, but there are thousands, tens of thousands of uh, loans. I don't want to have every single date listed. I want to have, instead of 625 or 56, I want to have the end of the month. So we're going to insert a column. end of the month. Great. Now, it may be hard to understand why I did this, but it just makes it cleaner. So that, that way I can, when I want to filter to just loans in June 30th, 2013, I'm only selecting the one um, month instead of having to select, you know, June 1st, June 2nd, June 3rd, and so forth like that. So this column is kind of a helper column. I, I really like that. In fact, we're going to go ahead and add a year as well. Okay, so I think we've covered pretty much everything. Um, the only thing we can look at is what would happen if I, I'm gonna add um, one more um, function in here. At any point, you can go back and then insert a function after the one you have highlighted. So I'll click on this first added custom column. Um, Insert. I'm going to call it temp because we're going to get rid of it. And I'll just see if this works. Equals test. And as you can see over here, there's that test column. And because I removed other columns, it doesn't show up again. But before that, there it is. So I've inserted a column. And here it is, this added custom six. The great thing is I can go back in at any time and I can delete this. It gives me the warning, telling me to be careful because everything behind it is dependent on what I did here. However, 
if I go down to the very bottom, the last step, it looks like I have kept everything, so it did not affect anything. So you have to be careful about that. And the last thing we want to do is load and close it. And I think you can agree with me that this is a lot easier to deal with than what we had over here. So hopefully you found this video of value. Uh, I'll see you at the next video. Thanks.